Hey fellas, me Trapper here. I've had some questions lately about snaring fences, uh, specifically um, about how to snare fences where coyotes are climbing over the top of the fence. Now you may not think that coyotes are very good at climbing fences and you'd be wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at fence snaring today and there are basically three ways to snare a fence. Uh, you can snare a fence where the uh, animal is going under the fence. You can snare a fence where the animal is going over the top of the fence. And you can snare an, air, uh, an animal where he's walking along parallel to the fence. We're going to look at all three of them uh, here today. Now, if you have access to woven wire fences, that is probably the best place that you could ever go snaring. It makes it as simple as taking candy from a baby. So let me show you how I snare fences. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is look at snaring fence crawl unders. Now you can see I've got a woven wire fence here and hopefully this will show up on camera. But what you're looking at right here is a tailor-made fence crawl under. Right there. You can see all the way down the line, there's no, uh, no places to crawl under. Fence is peeled back a little bit right there but as it goes on down, it's pretty tight. But when you get here, look at that opening. You've got these sticks that have uh, fallen down right here. It's just a wide open opening. If my uh, producer will get, uh, get her paws out of the way. Look at that, couldn't ask for anything better than that. So what we're gonna do is we've gotta hang a snare right here. And I'm gonna show you how I use this fence to support the snare and what I do about anchoring because that's, uh, that's an important consideration. All right, supplies that we're gonna need. We're gonna need a snare. I'm gonna use an extension cable. And then you gotta have some support wire. That's just a 14 gauge wire there. Nothing, uh, nothing fancy uh, as far as all of that is concerned. And then of course you gotta have your American-made side-cutting pliers. Not gonna do much snaring without these things. Okay, the first uh, order of business is to get your snare wire or your snare support wire hooked to the fence. Now, this is just uh, about 18 inches, two feet of uh, 14 gauge wire. And if you wanna see how to uh, hang snares and how to attach them to snares, there's an, a number of different ways. You can watch my snare school videos. Uh, it's a playlist. But when it comes to a woven wire or chain link fence, here is the critical thing that you need to know. Step one is to, let's see if I can get that glare. Step one is to wrap that wire around a top strand right there, okay, on that square. Now, what I did next is I squeezed, squeezed that wire together. You want to put some tension on it. You can see how uh, then I go and I wrap around the second one. When I release my grip, it is the tension of the wire that's gonna hold this tight. That's, that's critical when fence snaring, and I hope that makes sense. I hope you can see it. You've gotta have tension between the two contact points. You can't just walk up and wrap a piece of wire there and then wrap it around right here. You need to add some tension. You need to squeeze it together so that when the fence tries to pop apart, it's gonna hold tight. That's what's gonna provide your firmness. And once you've got that, and it does, this doesn't matter if we're going to snare uh, the top of the fence, it doesn't matter if we're gonna snare a crawl under, under the bottom of the fence, or it doesn't matter if we're gonna uh, have a, 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 a set right here where they're walking along the fence. This, this is the key part of fence snaring right here. Doesn't matter what type of snare you're hanging or where, doesn't matter. Get that right and everything else is gonna follow. And so now the next thing is to hang our snare in the crawl under right here. So let's take a look at that. Now, like I say, you can watch snare school and you can see there's uh, dozens of ways to attach your snare and hang your snare. I'm showing you a very simple way here. You can see all I did is I took that wire and I just wrapped it around the neck of the snare a couple of times and then pointed this uh, the end of the wire back. And you can see that snare is now supported. And by bending this wire up, down, and out, I can put this snare wherever I want. You'll notice the lock 
is not directly above at the 12 o'clock position. You want it at the 10 or 2 position. And uh, you can watch snare school for all that. But that's very simple to do. That takes about takes about 10 seconds to, uh, to have a good, solid connection right here. Now all I have to do is position it in the walk under and the crawl under. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken, and I'm going to move this just a second here and put my hand behind it so hopefully you can see it. You can see I've got my snare set, and it is hung right in this opening here. And you want this perpendicular to the walking surface, straight up, straight down. You can see I've got my lock there, and there is uh, the support wire. Nice opening. Now I've got a little bit of space over here, so what I'm going to do is I am going to... Uh, Add a little bit of blocking right there. And that is your finished set. All right, let's talk about anchoring uh, a fence snare. This is also very important. So we've got our loop set right there in the crawl under. Got it fenced down a little bit. We've got it supported with a good solid two point of contact uh, with tension um, support position right there. So where do we anchor the snare? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have an extension cable. So let's take a look at the extension cable here. And I'll pull that tight. Now what I want you to notice, I am not anchoring to the wire of the fence because that's got a lot of give in it, okay? Um, and sometimes these fences are not all that sturdy. Uh, you do not want to anchor to the fence. You wanna anchor to the post or if you have a metal post or a tree or something of that nature, something sturdy. So you can see I've got the anchor point right here. Next, and this is a point that's often overlooked, but is critical. You wanna make sure that there is enough cable that if you snare a coyote coming under there, the coyote is gonna freak out. And one thing that they love to do is jump these fences. You want to give that coyote enough cable to get over the top of the fence, but not to reach the bottom. In other words, if you get that coyote and he jumps this fence, you want him to hang himself. That's very common. Now, a domestic dog, if you were to catch a domestic dog, he's not gonna freak out and jump this fence. He's usually gonna be laying there, curled up asleep, waiting for you when you get back. But a coyote, it's a different story. That coyote is going to jump that fence and hang himself. So you, you want enough cable. And if you'll notice, that's why I anchored right about in the center of that fence. I want enough cable to reach down, to reach the set and get him up over there. So if I anchored at the very top, I would have to use a lot of cable to get down there. If I anchored at the very bottom, I would minimize cable, but he wouldn't have enough to jump over and hang himself. So I anchor right in the middle of the post with enough cable to reach the set and enough cable so that he can hang himself. Now the second way to use a fence when uh, snaring is to simply use it as a vertical um, uh, wall. So what I can see here is I've got my woven wire fence top of the strand of barbed wire right there. I've got my uh, little sapling here and I've got a trail running in between the sapling and the fence. So the fence is my vertical barrier. This is my fencing and I'm going to hang the snare right there using the fence as a guide. Now, I could anchor either here on this metal post but really, it's gonna be simpler to use that sapling, and that sapling is big enough to anchor uh, for coyote, uh, fox, bobcat, anything that might be coming through here. Now, if you're after big game, I would probably anchor over here, use a longer extension cable, get it up around there, around that fork, and, and reach over if, uh, if you were after deer or hog or what have you coming through here. But uh, that's where we're gonna hang it, and we're gonna support it right there. Very. Very simple set, so let's take a look at that. All right, very simple set. Once again, you can see I've just uh, bent that 14 gauge wire around the neck of the snare. I have got that snare hung, hopefully you can see that. And of course you will size the loop 
Um, it's height off the walking surface and the diameter of the loop based on your target species. Uh, right there, that would be good for coon, um, fox, and if you put a dive stick over it, uh, you could get a coyote to go through there. But basically, this would be a nice coon and a fox set. And you can see that I've got it wired off to the sapling right there. It takes about two minutes to put that set in. And, <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my helper there, she's, uh, she's entertaining herself. Look at that. I just, uh, there's never a dull moment. But uh, anyway, that would make a great coon or a fox set right there tied off to that uh, sapling. If you're going after big game, I would tie off to something a little more substantial like that. And you're using the woven wire fence as a vertical barrier. And you can see there's already a game trail going right through there. And uh, fortunately, my dog is smart enough to not get caught in the snare. But that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's basically walking alongside of a, of a fence. And you can just go up and down. And there's just opportunity after opportunity after opportunity on these woven wire fences for these little neck down, funnel down sets. And there's nothing wrong with gang setting up and down a stretch of fence. In other words, you could set, make one set for coon, one set for bobcat, one set for big game, um, and just repeat that process. So if something is too big and comes along and steps over it or too little and goes under it, there's another one waiting on down the line that is sized just for them. All right, the last situation that you can uh, snare fences on is when the animal's coming over the top of the fence. Now, there are a couple of variations of this, and this is where you're going to have to look at your particular situation. Number one, the animal can come completely over the top of the fence. Okay, a coyote can climb a wooden fence, it can climb a stone fence, and it can certainly get over a woven wire fence. A deer can easily jump these fences. Now, a popular uh, spot that I like to snare is when you have an area where the fence for some reason has sagged down and there's a gap. Okay, you can see that barbed wire strand up there and then you can see the gap and you can see on down, see how it tightens up again. And so right here would be a natural area for an animal to come through. Like I said, they can come over the top, they can come through the bottom. So how do you tell? Well, one thing that you can do and this is the great thing about barbed wire. Look at that hair. That barbed wire is gonna catch that hair right there. And so this tells me that the animal is crossing here. Unfortunately, I don't have another strand of barbed wire down here. So it's gonna be hard for me to tell if they're coming over the top or through the bottom. But you can easily set snares for both. And so we're gonna gang set this area right here. And I'll show you both ways, where if you had two snares, you could set it up or set it down. But that right there is gonna tell you that something is coming through there. Very, very obvious. You can look how thick the vegetation is, how tight the fence is, and all of a sudden you got that gap. It's a dead giveaway. All right, let's take a look at this first set here. We've used the same two point of contact tensioning method. You can see there's point of contact one, point of contact two, fence squeezed together to give a nice tight connection. We've got our snare, just a support wire wrapped around the neck of the snare. And you can see that's where the hair was. So we know that's where they're coming through. And you can see that snare is directly in between that gap. So anything that comes through, right through here, is history. Now, you can see it's starting to narrow down already, but it wouldn't hurt to uh, brush that in a little bit and brush that in a little bit with, uh, with some foliage, you know, stick some branches up there, some leaves, and just uh, give them a little bit of encouragement to come through there. Once again, I am uh, tied off to a little sapling over here. You can see there's the extension cable right there once again if that's a coyote or something that's coming through your fence you want to give him enough juice to hang him and if that's a deer then you want to make sure you use something good and heavy that's eighth inch cable right there and uh 
like I've said before, I like to anchor a little on the high side so that if uh, a deer comes and wraps around this, they're gonna strangle themselves. So anyway, now, if you had an animal that was coming over the top of this fence, the only difference that you would do is you would put your loop over the top and you would use an appropriately sized snare. In other words, you wouldn't use something little like that. I would open it up to uh, say a 12 inch in diameter, 10 inch in diameter and have it right above that. And then once again, brush in on that side and brush in on that side. But basically it's the same set. And all you're doing is bending that support wire down or bending that support wire up. She wants that deer that we saw a little earlier on the other side of that fence. It's just about to drive her bananas. She gets very vocal when it involves deer, squirrels, or hogs. But hopefully you can see that. It's a, it's a very similar principle. Just put that snare up there, put a little brush on that side, a little brush on that side. If you're snaring a gap, bring that snare down in between that gap. If you've got barbed wire to take a look at, pay attention. Look for that hair. Try and identify what type of hair that is. Check each one of those strands as you go and uh, see what you've got. But it's, uh, snaring's pretty simple, you know. The key principle is have a good solid support, hang that snare where the animal is gonna travel, use loop size appropriate to the animal that you're trapping, and then make sure that you've got a good solid connection to tie off on. All right, fellas, just some closing thoughts. When you're snaring those fence crawl unders and you see there's a little opening about the size of an orange or a grapefruit or something, uh, you may be tempted to think that that's just a small animal that's using that. That's just a rabbit coming through there. You would be shocked at the size of an animal that will use a fence crawl under like that. Just remember, if an animal can get its head through that opening, it's gonna squeeze its body through there. Uh, when I first started snaring fences, I would come across these little bitty openings that were, like I say, size a little bit bigger than an orange, a little bit smaller than a grapefruit, maybe a softball sized opening. And I would think, oh, there's a rabbit coming through there. <laughs> come back the next day and I've got a coyote strung up. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're choosing your snare size, uh, your cable and all of that. Just because the opening is relatively small doesn't mean it's going to be a small, weak animal that you catch. But the bottom line is those woven wire fences, man, those things are absolutely wonderful for snaring. If you've got them in your neighborhood or on your trap line, you need to look closely at them. And if you've got barbed wire, examine those prongs and see what's uh, what's been coming over or under that barbed wire. It's a dead giveaway. Thanks for watching. Hoping it was useful, and uh, we'll see you next time.